This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, May the 12th, 2019. It's the feast day of four Roman martyrs who have traditionally been celebrated together. Nerus, Achilles, Domitilla, and Pancras. Flavia Domitilla was a niece of the Emperor Domitian in the later half of the first century. Nerus and Achilles worked in her household, and because of her relationship with the emperor, she was banished rather than killed for her Christian faith, at least for a bit. Eventually, something changed, although we don't know what, and all three were brought back to the mainland and beheaded in central Italy. Even though they're celebrated together, Pancras was martyred about 150 years after the other three, somewhere around the year 304 A.D., He was about 14 when he was condemned by the Emperor Diocletian himself, who was impressed with the intensity of the boy's faith. Sadly, in the Great Purge following Vatican II, Domitilla was wiped off the calendar of saints while the other three remained. But you can't celebrate all three at the same Mass. It's either Pancras on its own or Nerys and Achilles. Who knows? Today in 1364, in Krakow in Poland, only about a half a kilometer from Wawel Castle, the Jagiellonian University was formally established. It would go on to be the school at which Copernicus, St. John Cantius, and Pope St. John Paul II matriculated. So did Andrzej Duba, the current president of Poland. On the same day, across the pond in 1551, the National University of San Marcos was founded in Lima, Peru, and it is the oldest university in the Americas. The famous alumni list isn't quite as impressive as the Agalonian, but Carlos Manuel Chavez, who was a pioneer in cardiac surgery and who performed the first successful coronary artery bypass, learned his skills at UNMSM. In 1780 today, the American colonials under Major General Benjamin Lincoln surrendered to the British forces under Lord Cornwallis and Sir Henry Clinton in the Siege of Charleston. It was the largest defeat of the Continental Army in the entire Revolutionary War, and it was a massive morale hit. In the previous two years, the British Army had taken loss after loss. The so-called northern strategy had failed spectacularly, and many of the colonials thought that the ouster of the British army was just a matter of time. The siege of Charleston was a huge mental blow to the entire revolution. Now, it's hard to say whether it was coincidence or divine providence or a deliberate symbolic choice, but the end of the Revolutionary War and the American victory officially took place on the very same day, today, exactly four years later. The Treaty of Paris of 1783, which was signed in September, took effect on the fourth anniversary of the Siege of Charleston today. And for all intents and purposes, that makes today the official birthday of those free states that would unite together to become the United States of America. Finally, today it's the birthday in 1820 of Florence Nightingale. She was born in Florence, Italy, or Firenze if you're fancy, but she wasn't Italian. She was a Brit from the very rich and very well-connected set. Her sister, for example, was also named for the city of her birth, but rather than the relatively tame Florence, Parenthope Nightingale probably needed a crib sheet just to spell her name until she was 10. Florence's upper crust lifestyle in the early 19th century made her a natural caregiver, humanitarian, and social philanthropist. Like the ladies of Downton Abbey, rich young women were expected to dole out tokens to the hoi polloi, but Florence wasn't putting on a show. When reports started to come in from the Crimean War, she jumped into action and all but reinvented nursing. She believed in nutrition and sanitation, and whatever she believed in, she made others believe in too. She died in 1910, but her legacy is alive and well today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.